I thought long and hard about what molecules to do as examples in the movie and what to leave for the worksheets. And in the movie, of course, I want the most bang for my buck. So I thought a series of aromatic compounds would actually do an awful lot to illustrate quite a few of these examples and also at each stage bring in a few fun little complexities. So hopefully they won't complex you out of interest because all of this NMR and generally spectra assignation stuff is kind of fun and a little puzzle. So anyway, let's think about first of all chlorobenzene. So I've just drawn its picture up there, nice and as a skeletal structure. Now, of course, most of the way through, we've drawn our skeletal structures to get rid of the clutter and the clutter by and large has been hydrogen atoms. Now we're interested in the clutter. So therefore, for the rest of this set of movies, I'm not going to be drawing skeletal structures. I'm going to be drawing some form of displayed structure. So right there, there's the five hydrogens from chlorobenzene put in. So would you expect there to be five signals in the NMR because there's five hydrogens? And I hope that by now you've realized that no, it's not that simple because there are going to be hydrogens in a molecule that are equivalent to each other. In CH3, we've seen all the way through three equivalent hydrogens. They have the same signal. So let's see what's going to be equivalent in our chlorobenzene. And our circle one, just for fun up here, is blue. Is there another hydrogen there that's equivalent to my blue hydrogen? And I hope that without too much effort, you will appreciate that this hydrogen over here is the same. If we think, first of all, starting off with the chlorines, if that's carbon one, then that could be carbon two or that could be carbon two. We could go either way around without noticing any significant difference. Both of these blue hydrogens are bonded to a carbon that is directly bonded to the chlorine carbon. Both of them are bonded to another carbon that then goes to the same carbon down here, carbon four. OK, so both of these hydrogens are equivalent, but they're different from the other ones, such as this pink one here. This pink one is uh, effectively got carbon one, two, three. Well, if instead of going one, two, three here, I went one, two, three there, there wouldn't be any difference, which would imply that this hydrogen and this one are equivalent. They're both labeled in pink there. And I hope you can see why they would both be different. Again, you can describe it out. They're both bonded to carbon that's one removed from the chlorine carbon. They're both bonded to this carbon four down here. No difference at all between this hydrogen and this hydrogen. And then, of course, there's the fifth one down here. The odd one out, the one in red, the one at the four position, the one that's on the carbon directly across from the chlorine carbon, however you'd like to describe it. So five hydrogens, three different types, which will label HA, HB and HC. Now let's start predicting here what to expect in the spectrum. Let's think about HA. OK, HA has got one adjacent hydrogen, HB. OK, so if it's got one adjacent, well, then HB can be with or it can be against the field. Two possibilities. So we'd expect to see a doublet for HA. HB, let's go down, look at this HB just to not clutter it up too badly. It's got one, two adjacent hydrogens. So if it's got two adjacent hydrogens, we'd expect to see a triplet for HB. And then HC down here has two adjacent hydrogens, so we'd expect again to see a triplet for HC. So when I reveal the spectrum in all its wonderful glory, what we should see are two triplets and a doublet. Oh, there you are. looks kind of messy, doesn't it? Let's see if we can interpret it. Well, the easy bit is, of course, this triplet down here. This triplet that has a one hydrogen integration. So what we got here, we got one hydrogen that's got two adjacent hydrogens. Well, that fits perfectly to the description of HC. So here's HC down here. OK, now let's look up here. What do we have here? Well, initially it looks like a little mess. But let's think about what we're expecting. We're expecting this area to be both HA and HB. And indeed, the integration is telling us that there are four hydrogens in here. But it's not able to split them up because they're all mixed in with each other. Well, let's look a little bit further and think about what do we expect to see here? First of all, in terms of a doublet. Well, for the doublet that corresponds to the HA, 
two of the four hydrogens there. Doublet should be two peaks of about the same height. OK, well, how about those two peaks there? OK, I say doublet, right? Two hydrogens because it's about half of the four next to one hydrogen. So that fits quite nicely with HA. Now, what's left when we pull out that doublet is three peaks that are almost in a ratio one to two to one. Remember, these things are not always exact, although if you look up, match up this triplet with this triplet, you can see that it's the left hand one that's a little bit higher in both. So I'm going to say that those three peaks there match up quite nicely to the triplet expected for HB. So those three peaks there correspond to two hydrogens that are next to two hydrogens. OK, so that's the spectrum of chlorobenzene. OK, we predicted it nicely. And what's really interesting is the way that these particular ones overlap. But even though they overlap, knowing that we've got doublet and triplet, we can pull out that overlap.